Hi there. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use the gradient mesh tool to make this red chili in Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is lock this layer as we don't want to disturb this layer in any way. And from the bottom of the layers panel, click on create new layer option. Since our original image is in red with a yellow background, I think I'll change my mesh color to black as it will be clearly visible on top of red. So let's double click on layer 2 and from the color palette, select black as the mesh color. Since the fill color is already green, I'll let it stay green. I don't really want to change it. Now I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle on top of the red portion of the chili so as to cover it entirely. All right, now grab the mesh tool from the toolbar on the left and click on the center of the rectangle to apply the mesh. At this point, you'll find horizontal and vertical black lines uh, running through the center. These two are our mesh lines. Since we need to be able to see the red chili in order to align our rectangle to the shape of the chili, let's hold command on a Mac or control on a PC and left click on the eye icon or the visibility icon next to our layer 2 and it will be converted to the outline mode. And now comes the most difficult part of the mesh tool and it is to align it as you would do with tracing. For all the sides, I'd add anchor points at locations where I'd have to if I trace this image because uh, doing it in the beginning works really well for me as I do not have to shuffle between my tracing and adding anchor points. So you need to carefully look at the image and wherever you think there's a curve and you'd need an anchor point to reshape this rectangle to the shape of the image, just add it and it will make your task much easier. And once I'm satisfied with the location of the anchor points, I'd grab my white arrow and click on the points and align them to the image one by one. This is the most time consuming process and it will take a little bit of practice to master it, but hey, it's achievable. Also, most of the task is done using the anchor handles, so use them to tweak and adjust your lines. So in the beginning, your objective should be to make the lines cover the image and once that's done, you can do adjustments to make your mesh perfectly fit your image later. So I'm going to fast forward the video until the adjustment is done. All right, now the mesh looks much better, so let's add more mesh lines. As you can see, our image does not just have one color, it also has highlights, which we need to take care of using the mesh. Just click on the side of the line where you want a line added, and Illustrator will try to align it with the rest of the mesh lines, if any. Once you know you have enough mesh lines to cover the colors of the image, try to align and adjust them as the next task is to color them which is the easiest task of the entire process now my mesh is ready so i'll go to window and click on navigator you'll find a pop-up window with our image in green it's in green because our fill color is in green remember now when i add colors to the anchor points of the mesh you'll find in the navigator window how the green fill color gradually changes to our target color. This is a nice way to know if you have missed any anchor point. So the best and the simplest way to color it is click on the eyedropper tool to select it or you can even press the letter I to select. Now hold the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC to select the anchor point where you want the color added once you've selected your anchor point, release the command or control key and your cursor will change back to the eyedropper as that's what was selected anyway. Now using the eyedropper, click on the area next to the anchor point you've just selected and that area will be filled with the color. Once that anchor point is done, move on to the next anchor point and use the same method which is holding the command on a Mac or control on a PC to select the anchor point 
and then releasing the key and sampling the color using the eyedropper tool next to the anchor point. Trust me, there can't be a better and faster way to color the mesh than this. You can see how the color of the image in the navigator window is changing to our target color as we progress clicking on the anchor points. Alright, our coloring is done so let's click on the eye icon next to layer 2 holding command on a Mac or control on a PC to come out of the outline mode. And let's hide the original image to see how well we've done and I think we've done a pretty good job. We were able to pick not just the target color, but also the highlights pretty well. Okay, it's time to move to the top green portion. And for this, you can add another layer, or you can even continue on the same layer. It shouldn't really be a problem. So I'm continuing on the same layer. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle much like we did with the red portion of the chili. Since it's in the outline mode, I won't be able to add the mesh here, so I'll have to hold command on a Mac or control on a PC and click on the eye icon next to layer 2 to come out of the outline mode. And since my original color now is green, I don't mind red as my fill color. So I'm going to grab the mesh tool and click on the center of the rectangle and then I can switch to the outline mode by holding the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC and left clicking on the eye icon. Now much like earlier, anticipate where you'd have to add anchor points to reshape the rectangle to your target image and click on those points to add anchor points. Now the thing is that since it's a mesh, clicking on the sides does not just add anchor points, it actually adds mesh lines. So you need to be careful not to add a lot of anchor points because it can really trouble you later when you're aligning it to your image. And once I'm satisfied with the anchor points I've added, let's reshape it to the target image. Let me alarm you that since this image does not really have a lot of area to play with, adding and adjusting mesh lines can be difficult and tricky as well. So be careful whenever you have to add a mesh to a shape that's too small or narrow in terms of area. I'm going to fast forward it until my mesh is ready. Whenever your mesh turns into folds like this, as if they're entangled, the best way out is to shorten the anchor handles by clicking and dragging toward the anchor points, and you'll find your mesh will align much better now. Okay, our mesh is almost ready, so it's time to add more mesh lines if required by clicking on the sides where we want these extra mesh lines and then adjusting and aligning them using the white arrow. It's time to bring the navigator panel once again, so let's go to window and click on navigator. Now click on the eyedropper tool or press the letter I to activate it. And I hope you remember that to select the anchor point you need to hold the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC and then left click on the anchor point and then release the key and using the eyedropper tool click on the area around the anchor point to pick the sample color. So continue this until you will have clicked and colored all the anchor points. Once my mesh coloring is done, I'll hold the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC and left click on the eye icon next to my layer 2 to come out of the outline mode and our image is ready. So that's what we've made and that's the original image. Pretty close I'd say. Let's just add the background now. Let's grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle as big as the yellow background of the original image and then press D to reset the image to default setting which is white fill and black stroke and then press forward slash to change the fill to none. Now using the eyedropper tool sample the yellow background and then send this rectangle to back by holding command shift 
and left bracket on a Mac or control shift and left bracket on a PC. And now you have the image ready. It's a tedious process, but it definitely gives excellent results as well. All right, so that concludes our session today. I hope you've enjoyed the session and learned something new from it. And if you have, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet on Sunday, goodbye and thanks for watching.